What is up guys, it's me Zach Lee and welcome to SDC, the NBA talk show where we talk about everything that went on in the NBA from the previous day. And today we have a couple of news stories plus three games of NBA playoff action to cover, so let's hop right into it. In today's NBA, there aren't many trash talkers. Not many guys to try and get into the head of their opponents. No Michael Jordans, no Gary Paytons, no Kevin Garnett's, none of that. Well. Actually, we do have a Draymond Green. Now his antics on and off the courts do make some NBA players absolutely despise him. And some people see nothing wrong with it and actually like the guy. I'm one of the people where I don't mind Draymond Green. I have no problem with Draymond Green. I like his trash talking. I kind of like his mentality because I think it brings an edge and some extra competitiveness to the games, which is always a good thing as long as it doesn't go too far. I might not feel the same way if I were on the court wearing a different jersey than Draymond Green though as he has proven that he can be a pretty good trash talker. Just as blazes for Mo Harkless as Green has been letting Harkless have it throughout their first round series. First things first though, I gotta fill you guys in with a bit of backstory to the root. Of this, of this trash talk. Now, Mo Harkless had some sort of clause in his contract or something, where if he shot 35% from the three or better during the regular season, he would get a $500,000 bonus. And with like three games left to go in the regular season, Harkless was right at 35%, at 35.1%. So he smartly decides, you know what? I'm not taking any more threes. I'm taking my $500,000, a smart move. I cannot be mad at him for that. But he messed up by letting Draymond Green find out this information. As Draymond Green let Harkless have it every single time, he touched the ball on the perimeter, saying, you ain't gonna shoot it. You still chasing that petty change. And Harkless did shoot it and he missed. Actually, he missed all of his attempts that game. He went 0-0-4 from three. Green was also heard telling Harkless as he was attempting one of those four misses that if you hit this, I might think about contesting the next one. I might think about contesting the next one. Not if you hit this, I will contest the next one. But no, if you hit this, I might think I might think about contesting the next one. Harkless confidence was probably at an all-time low <laughs> during that game. And of course, Harkless was salty too. I mean, I can't blame him. If I let Draymond Green in my head like that and I wound up missing all of my shots, I will be salty too. He was so salty that when his teammate Al Farouk Aminu hit a shot in Draymond Green's face, Harkless was said to have rose up off the bench and say, ha, take that, Dre. Harkless, as an NBA player, I have nothing but respect for you, all right? Nothing but respect, but you cannot take credit for another man making a shot when someone's been trash talking you all night and say, take that. You didn't do anything. <laughs> Moving on to this could be, and most likely is completely false news. According to sources, Paul George has been telling his former Indiana Pacers teammate in the locker room how much he had dreamed about playing with the Los Angeles Lakers as soon as he hit free agency. Yes, you heard that right. Paul George was going around telling his teammates that he wanted to be a Laker. Do you find that hard to believe? Good, so do I. Of course, this news just happens to come out right after the Pacers get swept by the Cavaliers and a bunch of people are talking about Paul George's future in the league and where he could end up if he wants to leave Indiana. But let's be real here for a second. Who or what player, especially a player of Paul George's statue, holds as much power with the Pacers as he does, is going to tell other players in the locker room about his plans to join another team when he hits free agency. I mean, you're talking about the leader of a team, the locker room leader of a team telling the guys that are supposed to be following him and trusting him that he plans to jump ship as soon as he can. I'm not buying it. I mean, nobody can be that Stupid, would that make him stupid to say that? Now, could Paul George want to play for the Lakers? Of course he can. Could he actually become a Laker when he hits free agency? Of course, I wouldn't have put it out the realm of possibility. But has he told anyone, especially his former teammates, that he plans on going to Lakers in free agency? No. At the end of the day though, this reporter that released this story did his job. I mean, the story made headlines. 
Speaking of Paul George though, the first team to be eliminated from the playoffs was Paul George and his Indiana Pacers. And we all know that George wasn't particularly thrilled to be once again eliminated by a LeBron James led team. The second team though, to now be eliminated from the playoffs will be Damian Lillard and his Portland Trailblazers. As with the 128 to 103 win, the Warriors finished their sweep of Rip City last night. And Demi Lillard, of course, wasn't too happy about this either, as after the game, he related the Blazers' struggles in beating the Warriors to Michael Jordan's struggles in getting past the Pistons before he ever won his first championship. You also gotta understand that, you know, if you ever wanna get out the West, you're gonna have to go through them. And for me, I, I understand that that's what it is. And, um, you know, it's, it's always been that way in the NBA. I, I think about, you know, when, the Pistons was just beating up on Jordan, and he he was just kicking his butt every year, and he had to get through them if he wanted to get to where he wanted to get to, and um, that's just what it is, because they're going to be here. They're going to be there every year, and um, we have to look at that and understand that we got to be better. We got to go get better, and um, come back better as a group if we want to move past them. Which is true. I mean, he's not saying that he's like MJ or anything, but simply that every team has their struggles if they want to become a champion. Like he said, MJ had the Pistons. For LeBron James, it was the Celtics. For the Warriors, I believe it was the Clippers, as the Clippers, I believe, knocked them out two years in a row back when they had that rivalry before Warriors won the championship in 2015. After the game, though, Kevin Durant did continue to praise Damian Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers for their uh, great play, I guess. You got to give credit to the Blazers, man. They made it tough on us all series. Um, those two guards that they have are, you know, some of the best I've seen in a long time. You know, they're well coached and this arena is amazing. So you got to give them credit all season for fighting their way back and getting into the playoffs. And, you know, it was a fun series to play against. Lillard was just about the only person who could get it going for Portland last night, though, as he had 34 points on 50% shooting from the field. Golden State dropped 45 in the fourth quarter, and the game was pretty much over after that. Kevin Durant had 10 points in his 20 minutes of action, and Steph Curry had 37 points, 8 assists, and 7 rebounds. The Raptors, after a couple of shaky games, their first four games of the series, have bounced back to look like the team we thought they could be headed into the playoffs. As with the 118 to 93 blow, when they now have taken full control over the series with the Bucks and they now have a 3 2 lead, chance of Raps and Six were raining down from the Air Canada Center last night. I'm sure the fans in Toronto didn't take too kindly to the Bucks introducing their team to the Barney theme song back in game three in Milwaukee. Head coach of the Raptors, Dwayne Casey, said that Norman Powell is the X factor of the series after Powell's magnificent 25 points on 8 of 11 shooting last night. He's a spark plug. I mean, he's a guy, he's an X factor. Um, you know, again, so many times you so, you know, concerned about DeMar and Kyle, rightfully so, that uh, that next spark plug, that next guy, that next instigator uh, is the guy. So in this series, he's been that X factor. Um, Again, the next series may be a next game. It may be a different story, but uh, he's done an excellent job of playing off those two and, and taking what the game has given him, whether it's a three-point shot or attack to the basket. Now, Powell has always been the guy that said he could flourish as a pretty good wing in the league given the opportunity. And it's nice to see him getting some shine in Toronto in the playoffs. Giannis scored 30 for the Bucks, while Lowry had 16 points and 10 assists, and DeRozan added 18 for the Raptors. Unlikely Heroes played a huge role in Atlanta as they tied the series at two games apiece against the Washington Wizards last night. Point guard Dennis Schroeder found himself in some early foul trouble in the game who had bounced around from team to team this season and found himself as a last second signing by the Hawks filled in nicely for Schroeder though, giving them 10 points and 5 assists in his 20 minutes of play and Dwight Howard also decided that he'd finally do something in the playoffs as he had 16 points and 15 rebounds and really the entire Hawks team just made solid contribution to get the 111 to 101 win. And after calling Paul Millsap a crybaby during the post game interview of the last game, Markeith Morris had another off night for Washington with only nine points on three of 10 shooting while Paul Millsap had 19 points, nine rebounds and seven assists. Beal had 32 and Wall had 22 points and 10 assists for the Wizards and the series will now shift back to Washington for game five. And that about wraps up all the action for the day 10 recap of the 2017 NBA playoffs and now it's time to get into the player of the day. Yesterday, you guys selected Nene Hilario 
and is 28 points on a perfect 12 of 12 shooting from the field to go along with 10 rebounds as your player of the day and here are today's nominees. You have Stephen Curry and his 37 points, 8 assists and 7 rebounds. Dwight Howard and his 16 points and 15 rebounds. Norman Powell and his 25 points on 8 of 11 shooting as well as 4 rebounds and 4 assists. Or Paul Millsap and his 19 points, 9 rebounds and 7 assists. As always, you guys go vote for the player of the day right now by following the straw poll link down in the description box below. But other than that, thank you guys once again for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on it and make sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA every single day. And until tomorrow, keep getting the buckets, Team SDC, and I'm out of here. Peace!